Hello and welcome. My name is John Bristow. I'm a member of the developer relations team at Progress. On behalf of my team, I'd like to welcome you to today's webinar featuring the Telerik UI Tools R3 2017 release. We're incredibly excited to show you the latest features we've added. This release is one of our biggest and strongest releases ever. Joining me on today's webinar are my colleagues, Sam and Ed. Together, we'll highlight many of the features we've added to this release. Before we begin, I'd like to take a moment to cover some housekeeping items. First, all the bits you'll be seeing here are now available. So, make sure to fire up the Telerik control panel to download any updates. Individual product updates are also available through your account page on Telerik.com. Now, if you happen to get pulled away from your desk during the webinar, don't worry. This webinar is being recorded and will be available up on YouTube. You can find our channel at youtube.com slash Telerik. We'll also provide a recap of the webinar and your questions in a follow-up blog post. This will be available at blogs.telerik.com. Speaking of questions, we'll be answering your questions during this webinar on Twitter through the HeyTelerik hashtag. Please tag your questions using this hashtag so we can find them and answer them accordingly. And what would be a webinar without a prize for the best question that's asked? In fact, we'll be giving away some cool prizes to the five best questions. Please note that this offer is subject to our sweepstake rules. And now, on to the webinar. The R3 2017 release is one of our biggest and strongest releases ever. We've added a boatload of new features and fixed bugs. We think it's never been a better time to be a developer using Telerik UI tools. For simplicity, we decided to tackle this webinar using four areas of focus, web, mobile, desktop, and reporting. Ed will be walking us through the latest features in Telerik UI for ASP.NET Core and ASP.NET MVC. Sam will highlight the latest innovations we've made in Telerik UI for Xamarin and the mobile aspects of Telerik UI for UWP. And I will be covering both the desktop and reporting side of our Telerik UI tools. First up is Ed, who will walk us through the latest features we've added to our web UI tools for ASP.NET Core and ASP.NET MVC. There's been a huge amount of activities for .NET web developers over the past few months with .NET Core and the like. We know you'll love what we have available for you in our latest release. It's time to dig into ASP.NET and JavaScript technologies with Telerik UI for ASP.NET. Telerik UIs enable you to build stunning web applications using your favorite .NET platforms. Whether you're using ASP.NET Web Forms, ASP.NET MVC, ASP.NET Core, or pure JavaScript front ends with your .NET app, we have you covered. These feature-rich UI controls have flexible and intuitive APIs and are powered by our popular JavaScript framework, Kendo UI. Telerik features a wide array of UI components for any scenario, all themed and responsive so you can focus on making great applications. But with Telerik, you get more than that. You get a complete Visual Studio experience that includes templates, scaffolding, fluent API-driven HTML helpers with IntelliSense, and ASP.NET Core tag helpers. You also have the opportunity to take advantage of the impressive Telerik document processing library. This enables developers to create, import, export popular Office formats such as PDF, Word, and Excel. Our engineers have been hard at work on the R3 release and is jam-packed with new components and features. I'll walk you through these updates and share a few demos. If at any time you have a question, tweet it to hashtag HeyTelerik. First up is our updated SAS theme builder, which was initially released in the R2 update of this year. The theme builder allows you to customize all of our web UI products through an intuitive online interface. This includes ASP.NET Ajax, MVC, Core, Kendo UI, and more. You can begin customizing from our default theme or use our Bootstrap 4 base theme. The SAS Theme Builder's Bootstrap theme was updated to support the latest beta release that just shipped a few weeks ago. To see the theme builder in action, visit themebuilder.telerik.com. This release marks a milestone for ASP.NET Core 2 support. This means all of the widgets for ASP.NET MVC, including what you see in the webinar today, also work on .NET Core 2. Not only does Telerik UI for ASP.NET Core support ASP.NET Core 2 along with .NET Standard 2, 
We've also included file new project templates for kicking off your project with Telerik UIs already configured and a variety of tag helpers, which are only available to ASP.NET Core. The brand new range area chart was added in this release. The new chart helps visualize data that has corresponding minimum and maximum data points. Let's take a quick look at how the chart is built using the Telerik UI for ASP.NET HTML helper. The range area chart works in ASP.NET MVC or ASP.NET Core. And for this demo, I'm gonna use the ASP.NET Core 2 version. Now I'll start by adding an HTML helper to our page using the Fluent API, and I'll set the name and title of the chart. Next, I need to add a series. That'll define my range area chart. And for the range area chart, I need to set some data. So I'll use a two-dimensional array of doubles here to represent the minimum and maximum values of the temperatures that are gonna show on the chart. Now, again, I have two data points for each plot point on the chart, so I need to set a from and to template or a minimum and maximum value to display the degrees Celsius here. For the x-axis of the chart, I'll simply use the month to display the months down below. And I can also set custom tooltips for when somebody hovers over a data point. When we run the chart in the browser, you can see if we hover over each of the data points, we get nice tooltips and all of our templating is working perfectly. The Telerik Document Processing Library, a robust tool for dealing with standard Office formats, receives some new APIs with this update. If you're using Telerik, you have access to the Document Processing Library. For more information, visit docs.telerik.com and you'll see documentation that fits your platform. Multi-day selection can now be enabled using the calendar widget. Setting the selectable property to multiple will enable this new feature. Once enabled, users can select multiple dates from the calendar using hotkeys like Shift Select, Control Select, or clicking and dragging. Let's see the multi-select in action and see how to work with it in the client-side API. So let's jump into Visual Studio and check out the new calendar APIs. So on my page, I've added the calendar component and I've set the selectable value to multiple. This is gonna enable that new user experience where users can select multiple dates from the calendar. And whenever somebody clicks on a date on the calendar, I wanna capture that event. So I'm gonna capture this on calendar changed event and we'll handle that with a little bit of JavaScript. Now I also have on my page a simple HTML ordered list with the ID of selected dates. I'm gonna use this as a simple way of displaying the dates that are selected on the calendar. Now this on calendar changed event, again, happens every time somebody clicks on dates on the calendar. And when I handle this event, the first thing I'm gonna do is select the calendar from the DOM. So I need to go out and find that calendar. Once I have it, I can use the select dates API. This is gonna give me all of the selected dates currently selected on the calendar. Using a little bit of JavaScript, I'll map that date into a list item. So for each date selected on the calendar, I'll just map those into a set of list items, and then we'll append those to that selected date order list so we can display them in the browser. So here I have my simple application running, and you can see when I click on a date, I have that displayed up here on the right-hand side. And I can also do a drag select, and I can also control select to select multiple dates individually, or I can shift select to select ranges. This is a super simple but handy API that you can use to enhance different aspects of your application when you need to select dates. Another control to receive multi-day functionality is the scheduler. The scheduler now supports multi-day events that span long running or overnight activities. Here I have a scheduler with two events on it. If I want to extend the end date of an event, I can simply grab the handlebars and drag it across the timeline. If I want to extend dates even further, I can double click on an event and change the start and end dates using the calendar. If I want to expand out and see what those events look like over a larger timeline, I can look at it in the week view. Here you can see multiple events spanning over multiple time frames. Everyone's favorite control, the grid, is more powerful than ever with this release. Virtual scrolling is a popular feature that enables a scroll bar to quickly skip through pages of data. Virtualization only loads enough data to satisfy the current view, 
allowing users to work with massive data sets. Since virtual scrolling only loads data visible to the page, performance remains optimal even under heavy loads. Before this popular feature could only be used with read-only scenarios. However, due to customer feedback, we now support CRUD operations with virtual scrolling enabled. Let's take a look. Let's jump over to Visual Studio and see how to use Create, Read, Update, and Delete with virtual scrolling. So on my page, I've added a grid and I've set a few notable properties here. First of all, I've set the edit mode of the grid to inline. This is gonna enable the user interface for the edit and update buttons on each row in my grid. Next, I've set the scrollable property to virtual. This is going to enable the virtual scrolling on the grid. And finally, I've set up a data source that goes back to a controller and simply interacts with Entity Framework to do the create, read, and update and delete functionality. Now, this table that I'm pulling from Entity Framework has 10,000 records in it. And if we jump over to the browser, you'll notice that even when I try to scroll, there's no lag in the functionality of the grid. And I can scroll virtually through those 10,000 records. And again, instantly I can see the data in the user interface. Now, if I want to edit one of these items, I can simply click Edit and then change a value and click Update. I can also remove items from the grid by clicking Delete. Now this is all being done with virtualization. Let's jump back over one more time into Visual Studio. And this time I'm gonna enable Pageable on the grid. This isn't something I'd recommend for production, but it helps visualize what's happening in the grid uh, when virtualization is enabled. So let's refresh our browser. And you can see I've got 9,000 9, items because I've deleted one. But what I wanna focus on is when I scroll the grid, we jump to page 93. So this is what's happening behind the scenes in the virtual scrolling. So we're simply fast forwarding the grid uh, to certain page points in the data set. We've also added new fine tuning capabilities to the grid's pager component. By default, if the grid's data set is smaller than the page size, the pager's hidden. In some cases, this might not be the desired behavior, so we've added an API for developers to control the behavior. Infinite or endless scrolling was also added to the grid. This user experience allows users to seamlessly scroll through pages. The grid detects when the user is nearing the end of the page and silently loads a series of data in the background. This feature can be enabled by setting the grid's scrollable property to endless. Additionally, the page size can be adjusted to optimize your user's experience. Let's jump back into our grid demo and enable endless scrolling. To do this, we'll change our virtual scrolling property to endless. We'll save this and then go back to the browser to see it take effect. With endless scrolling enabled, much like virtual scrolling, we can load large sets of data without any performance hit. With endless scrolling, as we reach the end of the page, the grid will automatically load the next set of data. This is a similar user interface you might find with something like Twitter or Facebook. A continuing trend with every release this year has been to improve accessibility compliance. It's important to ensure that users are presented with a user interface that can be used with keyboard navigation. Telerik UIs adhere to industry standards like ARIA and Section 508 compliance. If you're a .NET developer who's interested in using popular JavaScript frameworks like Angular, Vue, React, or Aurelia, then check out our Kendo UI webinar on YouTube. In this webinar, you'll see demos of Kendo UI for Angular and our brand new wrappers for React and Vue. John, back to you. Thanks, Ed. Great stuff. Just a reminder to please continue asking your questions on Twitter using the Hey Telerik hashtag. We're working hard to answer all the ones coming in. Lots of great questions on Ed's updates so far. Great to see. Next up is Sam, our resident expert on all things Xamarin. Sam's gonna show us all the things that are new in Telerik UI for Xamarin. It's really been amazing to see the growth in this space. Our team is incredibly excited to see what you build with our latest release. All right, so thank you, John and Ed, for getting us this far. After all the web uh, turmoil, let's kind of get back to sanity with all things mobile. 
My name is Sam Basu, and that is my Twitter handle if you need to get hold of me. So mobile on the .NET stack really means Xamarin and UWP. So let's talk about what we can do to help make developers successful so you guys can ship your apps faster with more polished UI. Okay, let's dive in. Okay, so this is my obligatory slide as we start talking about all things mobile. Remember that you guys have a lot of choice when it comes to how you build your mobile apps. The technology stack that you pick really depends on the app that you're making, the expertise that you bring to the table, and the code base that you want to maintain going forward. So take your time to decide. Now, I don't think it's an exaggeration when I say that Xamarin has truly democratized .NET mobile development. You get to write truly native, performant mobile apps that are truly cross-platform, and yet you do them from a single shared code base of C-sharp and XAML, which is exactly what we .NET developers love doing. So let's kind of dig into the Xamarin technology stack a little bit. You guys have seen this before, but traditional UI approach with Xamarin is Xamarin iOS or Xamarin Android, where you kind of have your abstracted C-sharp business logic, and then you build three different heads or the UI for each different platforms. Now, the reason I say this is there are legit cases where the Xamarin iOS or Xamarin Android approach is the right thing to do. And if you are going down that path, we want to help you out with Telerik UI for Xamarin, okay? But the more popular option, the one that I prefer nowadays is Xamarin Forms, where you have not just shared C-sharp logic, but you also share your abstracted UI code. And that's through the Xamarin Forms abstraction. Uh, you have a truly single code base of C-sharp and XAML, and you're serving up all platforms. Now, keep in mind that you can kind of mix and match a little bit. There are some things, some, some solutions that are kind of um, in between the what we call native and what we call abstracted. There are things like native embedding. You can do forms embedding. So uh, my two cents is start with Xamarin Forms and then dip into native land as and when you need it. And if you're doing Xamarin Forms, we truly want to help you out a lot uh, with some polished UI from Telerik UI for Xamarin. So let's kind of head into what we can do for you and what are some brand new things for you in this release. There are some new controls and a whole new theming approach and uh, quite a lot of exciting things. So um, if you have not ever used Telerik UI for Xamarin, let me tell you a little bit about why you should look into this. There are some times when you just don't want to reinvent the wheel. There are some complex UI that your app needs and you'll take a lot of time creating those things from scratch. So grab what we are offering out of the box. It's going to be polished and performant. It is truly native controls for iOS and Android. So for if you're doing Xamarin iOS or Android, it's just native wrappers. If you're doing Xamarin forms, same exact controls, native controls at runtimes, just rendered through wrappers. Now you can use Telerik UI for Xamarin from any um, machine you want, Windows or Mac, Visual Studio or Visual Studio for Mac, and we'll make it super easy for you to kind of download, install, um, and get started. So we'll uh, take you down the NuGet route if that's what you want. There are some new uh, NuGet packages that I'll show you, and you can customize the controls really. And the best part is, you don't have to take my word, there are sample apps in store in both iOS and Android that kind of showcase all of our UI controls. So take a look and play around with our controls to make sure they work for you. Bottom line is, uh, we know that you are .NET ninjas and we want to make sure that if you're doing Xamarin apps, we give you all the right UI controls so you can ship your apps faster. So let's take a look at what UI for Xamarin can do for you in this release in particular and we'll take an overall look. A couple of new controls uh, that we are pretty, truly excited about, a data grid. Everybody keeps asking for a data grid because line of business apps need data grids. Uh, so we have a data grid ready for you. It's in still still in CTP, but we'll keep working it. It's, it's polished so far. It's for you to visualize and edit and present tabular data to the user. And you expect all of the things that, um, that are kind of built in, sorting, filtering, grouping, uh, easy data binding so you can render your um, crowd operations easily with a UI that kind of matches up to your backend data. And you can bind this to lots and lots of records. It's got virtualization built in and you can style and you can do validations on it. So really exciting um, stuff about the data grid that's coming up. I'll show you some demos. Then the slide view. This is something I'm really um, kind of fond of because it helps me kind of get around these uh, often used scenarios of trying to present like an image gallery or like a wizard where you have a couple of screens uh, that the user has to go through. All of those things are a perfect fit for the slide view because it helps you present like multi-page content and the user can swipe uh, left and right. So it's really easy and it's just a placeholder so you can uh, put whatever you want in these containers. Next up is a masked input. It's kind of hard to imagine that we didn't have this before, but uh, all your apps need this, especially if you have like forms apps. Do not ever trust the user to just type in whatever you want in those input fields. Have these masked inputs so that you can expect exactly what you want from your form data. Uh, so you can do user validations and there are uh, predefined tokens that we can give you to kind of help the user type and then you can do custom uh, regular expressions if that's what you want to do. So, and um, you can do error handling if the user does not quite conform, but the idea is 
do not ever let the user just type freeform. Um, kind of guide them down the path of exactly what you expect. So moving on, there is a brand new rad path control. This allows you to draw complex shapes in your Xamarin Forms app. Uh, but we do support lots of geometries like lines and uh, rectangles and ellipses and stars and hearts, but you can also customize and do your custom geometries. So if you have any drawing needs in your apps, this thing is for you. Now, uh, this has been something we have been asked a lot. How do I theme my controls? And this is a common requirement for many Lino business apps where you want to have the same look and feel for all of your controls in your app. Your controls need to be themed overall. So we are presenting a pretty nice theming option that I think is gonna be something that uh, you, you will be excited about. It helps you easily style each of your controls individually or all of your controls altogether. And we do ship uh, a single theme right now. Uh, it's a blue theme that's really nice, but you can also customize. Kind of start from our theme and just make it your own. So theming is something we are pretty excited about and it's coming big time uh, in this R3 2017 release. So what else have we done? So a couple of new controls and some theming, but we haven't forgotten about the everything else that's in the suite. So kind of a quick refresher of everything else that we can do. Charts, this is kind of what we are known for. Dozens and dozens of charts and graphs, uh, complex charts with pan and zoom and tooltips and all kinds of things. We've been asked for uh, legend support in our charts and graphs. So you have that now. Uh, list view. This is again list view on steroids. I use this on every one of my apps. It's super fast. It has all these features like pull to refresh, data binding, uh, swipe actions, and so on. We have done even more performance tuning and given you some more control over the item templates so you can render your content exactly the way you want. Data form, this is kind of our differentiator because it helps you uh, kind of take a POCO object that's a business object and render it easily on screen. And you have those UI controls that map to your object properties and you have validations built in. So really nice and it works exactly the same cross platform. Side drawer, again, really nice to kind of tuck away your app's content and navigation onto a side and kind of slides out and you can control the animations and the effects and transitions. Really nice way to kind of organize your content. Calendar, so we give you all types of calendars with weeks, month, and year views and you have different ways in which the user can select date ranges. There's a day view and there are, there's lots of APIs to kind of help you customize and localize it and make sure it kind of um, integrates with the appointments that the user has on their phones. Gauges, all types of gauges, what you expect from us, radial gauges, linear gauges, complete flexibility as to how you render those gauges, uh, and you have lots of animations that kind of go with these things. Tab view and segmented UI. Tab view is sort of one of those ubiquitous um, uh, UI paradigms where you kind of lay down your content through different tabs and they render differently for iOS, Android, and Windows. Segmented UI is sort of an iOS specific thing, but it's really nice, again, a way to kind of customize and present your content. Autocomplete, again, don't let ever let the user type uh, freeform, uh, provide suggestions as the user is typing with their single or multiple selections that you want to support with the tokens. And then busy indicators, uh, don't make the user wait for something. If your app is doing something, present a way that the user knows that your app is doing something. So, I mean, how often do we kill an app because we don't know if the UI is just stuck or if the app is doing something. So lots of busy indicators that you can customize and make sure that the user knows that your app is doing something. Simple rating controls, that should be intuitive. If you have any um, need in your app to kind of collect this type of input, you can customize the shapes that the user uses to kind of give you ratings. So lots and lots of controls that kind of help you uh, present a nice uh, polished looking app. So I've been talking a lot on slides. Let's kind of jump out to do a quick demo. All right, so for my demo today, I am on my Mac desktop, and this is Visual Studio for Mac. Let me go ahead and open up a solution and we can talk through it while Visual Studio is loading this up. So um, I'm on my Mac today and I'm using Visual Studio for Mac, which hit GA um, a while back. And Visual Studio for Mac is really good. In fact, for Xamarin development, I also use uh, Visual Studio on Windows. There is really no difference between Visual Studio on Windows versus Visual Studio on Mac. Uh, the development experience is exactly the same. And as I'm going to show you, uh, some of the Telerik UI uh, Xamarin suites and any other uh, UI suites that you grab from us nowadays, it really works seamlessly across Windows or Mac. So. Uh, you don't really have to choose and just come as you are uh, with your development OS platform of choice and just like start coding. Okay, so I'm here in a solution. This is actually our uh, quick solution. Uh, and let me show you what the solution looks like. Uh, this has uh, a portable class library and it has an Android project and it has an iOS project. Now this is the same um, 
code base that's powering the sample app that you find in the iOS and Android stores. And if you just simply download a free trial of Telerik UI for Xamarin, we give you all of this code base. So it's no uh, secret, This is you, you guys already have this. So let's kind of dig through this code base and take a look at some of these new controls that we have for you. Okay, so let's go ahead and try to run this uh, app. You'll notice that I have the iPhone X simulator here because I have iOS 11 and um, the Xcode and all of these latest SDKs uh, already in place. If you're using Visual Studio on Windows, you will have to find a Mac agent because Xcode still needs to build your app. So be it on the cloud or be it on your network, just pair a Mac agent with your Visual Studio and then you should be able to deploy to the iOS simulators or even the Windows uh, iOS simulator. But I already have a simulator running, which is this one here. This is actually the iOS X simulator. Um, if I open up uh, an app, which is like white background, you can see the now infamous notch, uh, which is gonna make UX a little interesting for some apps, but there, there is already some guidance. But let's uh, go ahead and run our app here. Okay, so I wanted to build this solution. So let's go ahead and deploy this app. We are gonna say start and run without debugging. It's gonna pop up in the simulator. It's gonna think for a second and you can see the app loading up and now you have it. Now uh, I'm still using uh, UF for Xamarin as a trial so you get the normal uh, warnings, but this is the app that you can actually download from the iOS or the Android stores. And it's really nice to kind of see and play with all of our controls uh, in action. So let's go ahead and look at some of the new controls that we have for you in this release, starting with uh, the data grid. So let's look at the first look. Uh, this one here is just a sim super simple grid. It just has a couple of um, uh, columns here, three columns, and then it's it's doing some grouping here, right? So you can bind this uh, data grid here. I mean, data grids are meant for line of business apps, but you can bind this to hundreds and thousands of records. We're not saying you should, but if you are doing so, it is very smart in the way it does UI virtualization. So it's gonna be smooth and scrollable no matter how much you bind uh, data to this grid. So that's just a super simple grid with some um, with some grouping. Let's come back here, show you the same grid here now with a little bit of theming on. I'll talk about theming in just a second, but you can see how the selections are showing a blue theme because that's the default uh, theme that we're shipping. So let's take a look at how this data grid is working. So I'm back in my code. This is Visual Studio for Mac. And let me show you a couple of things. So everything that I'm doing is right here in the portable class library. There is nothing iOS or Android specific. This is all Xamarin Forms. So we give you some stuff here that's in build. There's some sample data. Okay, so let's take a look at this order.cs class. And it's just what a standard uh, order class should look like. It has a whole bunch of properties about uh, the customer's information, some shipping information, and, and so on. So just a plain old uh, POCO CLR object, right? So that's our order class. Now we have a data generator class here, which essentially creates a custom collection, an observable collection of orders, and it's grabbing its data from an XML file. This XML file just has a whole dump of a lot of sample data, and we are simply grabbing it as a stream and loading it up in memory as our collection of orders, right? So now let's take a look at uh, this view model here. Notice that it's part of the data grid here. So this is the view model that's providing the data to our grid. So in here, we are simply saying, hey, data generator, go ahead and generate some data, and then give us back an observable collection of orders called the order detail. So now if you look at uh, the XAML, this is the XAML that's powering the data grid that I just showed you. Uh, it's just some regular markup here. It's a content page. And right down here, you see this is a Telerik RAD data grid. It's setting its item source property to the order details, which is why we are seeing the data from the XML all the way into our app. Now, it's, it's doing a bunch of things here. There is auto-generate columns as false right now. Uh, selection mode and uh, user edit modes are set to specific things. You'll notice that the property group descriptor, this is set to a ship name, which is what's giving us the grouping. And then we're creating these columns by hand. This one here is the uh, ship shipping owner uh, column, and it's a templated column, and it's using a certain data template to show the image of the user. And then further down, we, are, uh, we have a numerical column, a text column, and so on. So just a very basic look of how to set up a data grid and feed it with some data. Now, let me show you something else that's gonna be very important as you develop with these new controls. And that is our uh, docs. So if you head out to docs.tillery.com and you drill down to the Xamarin Forms docs, everything that I'm talking about is really nicely documented. So for example, the data grid CTP, if you look at what it does, it's it's got a whole bunch of properties and ways in which you can customize how it works. For example, the columns that I talked about, the columns can be set manually, automatically, or mixed. So in our example, we were setting the columns manually. You don't have to do it. You can just simply point it 
to a data source and it's going to figure out the columns automatically. And you can see the different types of columns that the data grid can support, the templates, the booleans, the, uh, the date times, the numericals, the text, picker columns, and so on. So it's going to look through your data and try to give you the columns that match your data type. And then you can do other things uh, with the grid, like whether uh, the user can actually edit uh, your text or whatever the fields are inside the grid itself. I mean, this is a line of business uh, friendly grid, so the user should be able to edit and be able to slice and dice up the data however uh, he or she uh, sees fit. So if you look through all of the features, there is uh, it should, we talk about how you can do grouping and filtering and sorting and so on. And there is MVVM support through commands. So take a good look at the docs anytime you use any of our controls. Okay, so let's go back to the app and let's look at the next control. I'm going to go down here and look at the masked input because this is kind of really handy whenever you have like form stab data. So let's look at a, a very traditional masked input. It is what it says it should be. For example, phone numbers, if I start typing, you can see what the masked edit does. It just kind of makes the user follow a certain pattern. Zip code, uh, the same way. Numbers and then social security numbers are the same way, right? It kind of prompts the user to type the right things, right? Now, if I uh, come back here and look at the same thing with the theme, you can see how the numbers, everything is a little blue because we're using the blue theme. So let's go back to Visual Studio and uh, see what that does actually. This is the uh, XAML markup for the masked uh, input. And you'll notice that it's just simple rad masked input and it's using a watermark text that's optional. Then it's using a whole bunch of these things called masks and you'll see some zeros, you'll see some numbers and characters. So let's take a look at the docs and see why uh, all of this matter. So this is the docs for the masked um, input types, right? And you'll see that it does a whole bunch of things. The masked type could be set to either text or regex, right? So text is where you have a set um, uh, criteria for what you're expecting. And then regex is kind of regular expressions where you can do custom things, right? And you can see all the different properties that relate to the masked input, things like the watermark, uh, the display text, the display color, and you can do validations. So if, if the user does not quite conform to what the input you're looking for, you can throw an uh, error on screen and you can control how that error looks like, the color, the size, and where it fits, and so on. And if you kind of scroll down to um, what some of these masks can do, you'll see that this is a regular mask uh, of the text type. This is kind of validating an email address, so it's regex and it's doing a whole bunch of things. If you look at the features here, uh, we kind of tell you what these tokens do. So like zeros are for single digits, nine is for a single required digit, and special characters and symbols and so on. So with all of these things, you can really compose a, like a complex custom regular expression that you need. So no longer do you have to kind of wait and see if the user is typing the right things. You can always validate and you can kind of force the masked input to make sure the inputs that the user is typing is exactly what you want. Okay, so let's move on back to our simulator. Let's go back and take a look at uh, a few of the other new controls. Let's scroll down. Uh, let's look at the path which comes up next. So this is the rad path and it's kind of a unique control which helps you draw complex shapes on screen. So I was just going to click on the very basic example that we have. It kind of shows the, the different things you can do, rectangles, stars, horizontal lines, heart shapes, circular. These are some basic geometries, but you can do custom ones, right? So uh, let's kind of go back here into our uh, Visual Studio uh, project and let's look at uh, this one here. This is the rad path and you'll notice that I'm setting a few things here in the uh, sample project. Uh, this is the rat path and notice how it's using a fill color, it's the stroke thickness and so on. And it's using different, um, I guess, geometries like star and so on. And you can set these things both in code behind and in, and, and in the XAML. So let's take a look at the um, docs for rat path, which is up here. And you'll notice that it has all of these properties like fill and the geometry type that you want to support, the stroke and the background colors and so on. Notice how you can set the uh, geometry path to exactly a star or any of the predefined ones, or you can do a custom geometry. Now this is may not be for the faint hearted, but if you have like custom shapes that you want to draw on screen, um, we actually do provide you with a solid uh, set of documentation on how to exactly customize that geometry. Essentially, uh, this is how you kind of set up a, like this one is a custom arc. So essentially for any custom geometry, you set up a center, you set up the start angle, the sweeping angle and where things end and so on, the size and so on. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, back to the simulator, let's go look at the slide view. This I'm actually super excited about because it's a great way for you to present content in a very simple manner, but that's very intuitive for the user. So it's essentially a panel 
of things that the user can swipe through or kind of click through. This one here, notice I can just click on these buttons and it's just loading up different charts and graphs. The user can also swipe and you can control these animations really nicely. So that's just a simple uh, slide view. Let's go back to our Visual Studio code here and look at um, this code here. This is the slide view and I'm looking at the view model. Notice how it's just creating a list of images here and I'm, uh, I'm giving it a chart, a busy indicator and a pie chart and so on. And then if you look at uh, the uh, XAML markup, this is the rad slide view and it's essentially uh, infinite scrolling and some of these properties are set to true and then item source is set to images. So that's how it's doing it. And you can control uh, how the dots look like on, on the app and what each of these like icons and how the scrollability and the look and feel of this uh, looks pretty nice once you can control it. So let's look at um, the docs really quick for the slide um, uh, view. Notice the thing that I've pulled up here is uh, something called an item template. This is exactly the property that lets you control how your content looks like in each of the panels of the slide views. So you look at some of the XAML here, uh, this is just setting up the rad slide view, but inside of it is that item template that's kind of controlling uh, the text color or any other aspect of how uh, that exact template needs to look like. And once you give it some data, it's going to show up. This one here is just saying show it up in blue. Like So it's just a really a simple placeholder, but all of these navigation things built in like swiping actions and these buttons and these infinite scrollings. So you can kind of go all the way out to the last panel and then swipe over and you are back to the first panel and so on. So some very interesting properties and of course MVVM support with commanding so you can make the slide view work however you want in your app. Okay and then finally let's get to the last thing that I want to talk about in my demos and that is theming. Now each of the controls you'll notice that they have a theming aspect to it but there is a whole section here on theming that's going to show you various controls in a certain blue theme that we're shipping but you can actually easily customize this thing and it's really nice to have a consistent look and feel for all of your controls in your app. So let's kind of dig in and see what uh, theming can do for you. So again right out the gate I'm going to show you the docs and kind of step you through exactly how you use the theme and then how you customize it. So what exactly is the Telerik theme? Well it turns out it's a resource dictionary because we want to make sure that each of the controls that we are rendering adhere to a certain look and feel. So this is your standard uh, XAML markup on any given page and uh, this is where you can kind of bring in and merge some of the rad resource dictionaries. This is being shipped as a part of the, your uh, Telerik common uh, DLL. Uh, it's just a resource dictionary for each of the controls. Now notice that if you don't use all of our controls, you don't have to bring in all of the dictionaries. So for example, the dictionaries are separated out as uh, Telerik common, Telerik input, the, some of the primitive input controls, some of the charts, the data controls, the data grids. So they all kind of have their own separate resource dictionaries. So just pull in the ones that you want to use. Once you do that, in each of the controls that you're using at a control level, you can simply say style class equals Telerik theme. And that does it, right? So right out of the gate, you have a central place where you can bring in a theme as a resource dictionary and set all of your controls to that theme so they all look and feel the same. So you'll notice how like this one here is a list view and notice how each of them are uh, in that blue accent color. So let's kind of take a look at uh, modifying the default theme, right? So you, you start with the blue theme and you like a few things about it. Notice that this is the uh, xaminforms.com and assembly that I was talking about. This is the default resource dictionary, right? So you'll notice that the charts and the list views, the grids, they all have a certain um, coloring aspect to it. The accent color, the alternative color, the background colors, the complementary colors, they're all kind of defined in here for you. So you can start from this and then if you don't like something, you you can just customize it to make it your own. So uh, in this example, uh, you'll see that we are defining this as a custom dictionary. So we have changed a whole bunch of things in your list view to make them black and orange. And then when in your XAML markup, uh, you kind of define this as an X class uh, of the type custom and you do your thing and then uh, bring it in when you kind of pull in your resource dictionaries. So these are some Telerik resource dictionaries, but at the same time you can see local custom is what I'm bringing in. So this is a local custom directory that is based on the blue theme, but it has some customization and right out of the gate you see the list view being now black and orange. So again we are pretty excited about theming because it helps developers ship apps that look consistent and all of the controls kind of adhere to a certain look and theme that your liner business or your enterprise app needs. And then we kind of start you off with a nice blue theme but you can customize to make it your own. So that's all that I had with the demos. Let's uh, head back to the slides. 
And the point is, uh, if you're building any type of Xamarin app, we are here to help with UI for Xamarin. So stop reinventing the wheel. There are some polished and performant UI controls that are really hard to create by hand. So grab them out of the box and ship your apps faster with Telerik UI for Xamarin. All right, so let's switch gears and quickly talk about Telerik UI for UWP. This is the universal Windows platform. This is Microsoft's all-in Windows platform. What can we do for you in UWP land? Turns out quite a bit. If you're building UWP apps for any platform, tablet, uh, big surface hubs or HoloLenses, we have the sharp and polished UI that you need to again, build and ship your apps faster. These are essential things like 20 plus controls like grids and list views and map controls and all types of charts and graphs and list views, uh, a variety of input controls, all of them to kind of light up your UWP apps much, much quicker. Okay, so that's it from me. I've been talking really fast for a really long time, so I'm, I'm trying to give uh, save some time here for John to go, and go over his desktop and reporting stuff. But really quickly, uh, resources, just simple product links. If you're doing Xamarin, UWP, you know where to start. If you're doing JavaScript native, uh, take a look at our native script offerings. Uh, so all in all, if you're doing any mobile, we are here to kind of help you with some polished UI for all of your mobile apps. And everything starts at uh, Telerik.com. Once again, I'm Sam Basu, and that's my Twitter handle. So that's it from me. I will hang around to answer questions. But beyond this, it's over to you, John. Awesome demos, Sam. Thanks. Another quick reminder to please continue asking questions on Twitter using the Hey Telerik hashtag. I can see that a few of you are targeting Xamarin. Hopefully, you're excited about everything Sam showed. Now, let's take a few minutes to cover what's new in the R3 2017 release of Telerik UI for WPF, UWP, and WinForms. This trio formulates the solid years of work we've made into providing robust desktop UI controls. The desktop continues to be a solid and reliable platform for many of our customers. We want to ensure you continue to be successful when building desktop apps with our controls. Let's start with what we've added and improved in Telerik UI for UWP. Telerik UI for UWP contains over 20 controls that address common UI requirements in line of business applications. These include data management, scheduling, navigation, data visualization, and more. As you may be aware, the source code for Telerik UI for UWP is now available up on GitHub. There, we address issues and review pull requests from the developers. This reaffirms our commitment to the .NET ecosystem, and overall, it's been a great experience for us. It joins the many other projects we have available as open source. KenUI Core, the Just Decompile Decompilation Engine, and NativeScript, just to name a few. I encourage you to check out these repos and get involved. That stated, to strengthen our position for these contributions, I'm happy to report that Telerik UI for UWP is now part of the .NET Foundation. The .NET Foundation is an open source organization dedicated to guiding the development of the .NET ecosystem based on principles of openness, rapid innovation, and community participation. As a significant contributor and partner in the .NET ecosystem, we're tremendously excited to contributing our code to this organization. Telerik UI for UWP has a number of new features in this latest release, starting with the data grid, which is a very popular control. We've extended it to include a new row details feature, which allows users to view the record-related data in line. In previous versions of Telerik UI for UWP, developers would have to create separate dialogues in order to view any related items of a particular row. Typically, you'd see this if you bound a column to a collection-based property. The data grid could do nothing more than output the name of the type. Now you have the option of expanding it out to show this data. Another feature worth mentioning support for is an integrated tooling experience. With Visual Studio 2017, toolbox support has been added for the NuGet packages to easily view and categorize the controls. We've taken advantage of this feature and updated our NuGet package to support it. As soon as the NuGet package is referenced, the controls it contains will appear in the toolbox for you to use in your application. These controls can be used just like any other toolbox control with drag and drop support on the design surface. And finally, we've implemented many performance improvements to the chart control. As you can see, the rendering performance of the chart in the previous version was janky on mobile devices. In our latest release, we've improved the overall performance quite dramatically. We were able to achieve this by utilizing the composition API that the framework offers to boost the rendering performance of the chart control itself. Let's now jump into a demo to see the row details capability of the data grid. Here, I have a UWP project created in Visual Studio 2017. This project was created using Windows Template Studio, 
which is a great way for generating applications that can target popular frameworks like the UWP Community Toolkit and Telerik UI for UWP. If I go ahead and run this application, you can see that I have a grid with some data for teams in the NHL. You may have noticed that the collection property reflects the type name and not the expanded view that I'd like. It's not a shortcoming of the grid, rather it's by design. The grid doesn't know how to display complex types like collections. That's because the user experience is unknown. So rather than removing the column altogether, let's change this to display this collection through the new row details capability of their data grid. First, I'll define a data template for the collection property that I wish to render. In this case, it's for players on a hockey team. Here, I'm displaying the name and position of each player. Next, I'll specify the row details template of my parent grid by binding it to the template I defined above. I'll then specify the row details display mode property to be single. The display mode property tells the data grid how to show row details if they are available. The other value I can specify here is none if I don't want anything displayed. The last step is to bind an action to inform the data grid when to display row details. Here, I'll define a handler for the selection changed event that will call the show row details for item method on the grid when it's clicked. Essentially, I'm telling the grid to display the row details anytime a row is selected. Let's now build and run this application to see this new feature in action. As you can see, when I click on a row, its details are displayed in line within the grid. It's a really nice feature and one that should help users navigate data more easily. Let's now talk about what's new in Telerik UI for WPF. Telerik UI for WPF is our super popular UI control suite for developers building WPF applications. It features over 120 controls that enable you to build rich, beautiful desktop applications. The R3 2017 release of Telerik UI for WPF is packed with a lot of new features. Let's start with the virtual grid, which is now official. This control was originally introduced in the R2 2017 release as a CTP. It's a lightweight grid that virtualizes the loading of very large sets of data. I'm talking many billions of rows. It works by fetching and loading data when it's needed, rather than holding everything in memory. This allows it to be very efficient. However, without all its data, the set of available operations can be limited when compared to controls like the grid view. The good news is that we've added a bunch of new features and improvements to the virtual grid in this release. We don't have time to cover all of them. The good news is that you can test drive the virtual grid through the new demo app that's now available through the Windows Store. This app showcases all the controls available in the suite and gives users the opportunity to review the code and have a real example of the controls in action with preloaded data. Moving on to a new set of controls for WPF developers. We've added Open, Save, and Browse Folder file dialogs. This was a highly requested feature from customers. These three new dialogs provide themable alternatives to the commonly used dialogs in Windows. This should give you the ability to have a more consistent UI throughout your application and the rest of our controls. Let's see how this works. Here, I have a WPF project in Visual Studio 2017. Let's fire it up and see what it does. In my application, I have three areas for working with files and folders. You'll notice that when I perform the operation to select a folder, that we see the new rad open folder dialog is displayed. It's themed to my current style. This ensures a consistent look and feel throughout my application. This is carried forward through the rad open file dialog as well. All three dialogs are now available as part of the R3 2017 release. Switching back to Visual Studio 2017 for a moment, if we dive into the event handlers for these buttons, you can see that each of these are pretty easy to use. Now, I'm a big fan of data visualization because I believe they're the best way to tell stories about data. In the R3 2017 release of Telerik UI for WPF, we've added a new funnel type to the chart view class. This is useful in scenarios where you want to visualize data sets that typically decrease in value over time. 
Let's see an example of this. Here, I have another WPF application that has the new funnel chart present on the page. This chart is visualizing website optimization stats for the sales pipeline of a company. I can interact with the chart. I can modify its configuration. I can even filter against values in the bound view model. The chart itself is super flexible and can be themed very easily. If we jump over to the XAML for this page, you can see that it's easy to incorporate the funnel chart. Here, I've bound a variety of properties for the series to control the values for the slope, height, neck ratio, and so on. The PDF viewer is a popular control in Telerik UI for WPF. In our R3 2017 release, we are extending form support with form filling. That's in addition to the recently released forms display. Another feature which is included is editing. This enables users to edit fields in PDF documents, such as templates and applications in a formalized manner. We've also updated the PDF viewer to support document signing. This follows up on the signature display and verification function we made available in the previous release. Now, users will be able to display, verify, and sign PDF documents in their WPF apps. The grid view is one of our most popular controls. It has a ton of features and is widely used by many of our customers. In the R3 2017 release, we've added a new feature we call Sticky Group Headers. This allows users to freeze a group header. This means it will remain visible when you scroll through data. It's a really nice feature to have when you have multiple groups in a large table. The masked text input control now features a value mode property that enables the value to include literals and or placeholders. This is useful when you wish to accept characters like underscores and hyphens. The combo box control also gets a new option to select values only when the control loses focus or the user presses the enter key. This is especially useful for advanced users who perform a lot of form input through the keyboard. The spreadsheet control is another one getting a few updates in this release. Specifically, we've included the ability to use the VLOOKUP, HLOOKUP, and MATCH functions. This should help users more easily reference data in their workbooks. Additionally, we've added support for the DAYS function, which will help determine the number of days in a date range. And finally, we've extended support of our themes to the grid splitter control. All in all, there are a lot of updates in our R3 2017 release for WPF developers. Definitely worth checking out. All right, let's now move on to WinForms. Telerik UI for WinForms is our complete set of WinForms controls that offer unrivaled performance and a stunning user interface. It's developer-friendly, easy to use, and provides a wide range of features. Features like multi-touch, high DPI support, accessibility options, just to name a few. The R3 2017 release of Telerik UI for WinForms introduces a number of improvements that we think customers are just going to love. First up is the beta release of a new control for WinForms, the spreadsheet. The spreadsheet is a control that allows editing tabular data utilizing a variety of cell formatting options, styles, and themes. It supports a wide variety of features, such as an integrated ribbon, context menus, pane freezing, sorting, data validation, hidden rows and columns, and more. It's easy to incorporate into an existing WinForms app with rich support for the designer. Let's see how this works. Here I am in Visual Studio 2017. I have a WinForms project already loaded. This was generated using the Telerik UI for WinForms extension. Let's go ahead and incorporate the spreadsheet control. To simplify things, I'll jump over to the toolbox and add the RAD spreadsheet control to my form. I'll also add the RAD spreadsheet ribbon bar and dock them accordingly. To associate the ribbon bar with the spreadsheet, I'll open the smart tag and set the configuration. That's all that's necessary to get the spreadsheet integrated into your WinForms app, and it works just as you would expect. The spreadsheet control is quite powerful. It supports formulas, sorting and filtering, validation, styling, and much more. This is a great addition to the over 130 controls we have in Telerik UI for WinForms, and we hope you'll find a great use for it. Moving on to themes. As you may know, we ship 23 themes in Telerik UI for WinForms. 
In the R3 2017 release, we're introducing three more material themes. Material teal, material blue teal, and material pink. These new themes maintain the same user experience as our material theme. They provide color palettes for even broader customization options of the look and feel for your WinForms applications. Just like the PDF viewer in Telerik UI for WPF, we've added support for digital signatures and editing of forms. This means that your users can support both of these operations across both classes of .NET desktop applications. And finally, I wanted to highlight a new feature we've added to both Telerik UI for WPF and Telerik UI for WinForms. It's a new API that allows you to integrate your favorite analytics provider into your WPF and WinForms apps. With it, you can track things like health and feature usage. This will enable you to discover bugs in the wild. It's a great addition to both control sets and one that I'd encourage you to check out. All in all, this is a huge update to our desktop UI controls. Whether you're targeting UWP, WPF, WinForms, or a combination, you're in good hands. Let's switch gears and talk about reporting. Telerik Reporting is our complete .NET reporting solution for web, mobile, and desktop applications. It lets you create, view, and export rich, beautiful, interactive, and reusable reports. Everything a lightweight and feature-complete reporting solution should do. With an intuitive report designer for Visual Studio, a standalone report designer, and a powerful API, it allows enterprises to easily create elegant reports that can be directly embedded into your apps. In the R3 2017 release, we've added a bunch of new features. For example, we've added Web Report Preview Accessibility, enabling wider user audiences to view Web Report Previews. Now, our HTML5-based report viewers support major accessibility features like comprehensive keyboard navigation in both the viewer and its content, and dynamically extended markup that provides support for the most popular screen readers. We've also launched some new financial charts. The Open High, Low, and Close, or OHLC, series is designed to represent information about the price movement of a stock over a period of time, using candlestick or bar markers. And finally, we've improved the Excel grid generation algorithm that significantly reduces the time required for rendering huge reports to Excel. So no matter what kind of application you're building, if you have data and care to report on it, I would strongly recommend Telerik reporting. Well, that about wraps it up for us. Just as a reminder that all the bits you saw are available now. So make sure to fire up the Telerik control panel to download any updates. As I stated previously, you'll find individual product updates available through your account page on Telerik.com. Finally, don't forget to keep an eye on the Telerik blog site for a follow-up blog post to this webinar. The R3 2017 release of Telerik UI is one of our biggest and strongest releases ever. We've added a boatload of new features and fixed bugs, and we think it's never been a better time to be a developer using our tools. I hope you've enjoyed today's webinar. We'll see you next time.